Mike, are you, are you good for me to start? <laughs> Is everybody else ready for uh, the commander? Um, if if so, we're right on target for 45 minutes into the uh, tonight's agenda. Awesome. Um, again, my name is Luke Langwood. I'm the Southeast Area Commander. I apologize. I wasn't able to stay at my desk, so I'm at home. Um, and I live literally on the cliffs, so for whatever reason, I don't have good internet, so um, that's why I can't turn my camera on. Um, and I'd like to share kind of my understanding and kind of what the from the police department what we're tentatively planning for the gibson public safety district um doug and and christina if you guys need to jump in and tell me if i'm wrong please do so please interrupt me um at one point i think i heard like a possible two mile radius and then to, to right now it was, it was educating to hear that right now you guys are tracking encampments up to a quarter mile um, oh sorry i'm gonna interrupt you Sorry. Yes, please, please. <laughs> like, yeah. So the quarter mile radius is for the encampment team. That's um, just those two individuals who are based out of Gibson Health Hub, and they're um, going around that area. Uh, but the the public safety district will be bigger and will touch all the the neighborhood associations that um, touch the gateway. Right. So, and again, I don't know if that's um, going to be finalized or if if if, if the exact um, distance can be, you know, negotiated or, or changed. Um, talking with my staff and just so everyone's aware, um, I have all of my lieutenants on. Um, two of my lieutenants worked here this last bid, uh, Lieutenant Justin Trebatowski. He's our um, swing shift watch commander and Lieutenant Aaron Beck. He's our graveyard watch commander. Um, and then we were able to steal Lieutenant Gerard Bartlett from the Valley. And he is now our, our day shift um, uh, watch commander. And Lieutenant, and I'll get into and explain what it is, but Lieutenant Bartlett is also going to be in charge of our POP project that's specifically dedicated to the Gibson Public Safety District. Um, so just what I'm thinking right now is regardless of what the exact distance is, um, a good point that when, when myself and, and the Lieutenant were talking about this, um, something to recognize too is, um, you know, knowing this area command and, and knowing, um, you know, the, 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 the quality of life issues or the crime that's being, that's occurring, um, the providers and, and all the great stakeholders that provide a service to this community. Um, the only thing that I would throw out there in regards to um, the radius is I think at the end of the day, our mission from a public safety standpoint is we want to kind of be able to assess and see what type of impact that the Gibson public uh, or the Gibson hub is having for this part of, uh, of our area commander or the community. And um, if it stretches out too far, I think on our side, we're thinking like, will the, will the data be accurate to just the Gibson public hub or will there be other factors um, an example that we were talking about is the Walmart. We have a lot of activity at the Walmart at 301 San Mateo right now, right? And is that activity going to be included because it's within that radius when the gate, the, the, the gateway may not actually be the cause? So will it be a true accurate reflection of is Gibson Hub really, you know, causing all of this stuff, if that makes sense? But what I think is we don't, on our side for APD, we don't need to get too hung up on that is because it's important to kind of have a baseline of, of, of what's occurring now and then when everything goes operational. And when I mean by baseline is when it comes to a public safety district, APD, you know, obviously if something equals crime, you know, that's our job to, to, to investigate and respond to crime. And a lot of things, whether if it's quality of life issues can end up in crime we get involved, but in, 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 in my, the way I see it is a public safety district um, involves much more than just the police department. Like I said, obviously we have our role with the crime, but I think there's gonna be um, a lot of, there has to be a lot of involvement by fire and by ACS, by solid waste, by other departments within the city and maybe even other um, stakeholders outside of the city that's gonna affect public safety. 
So to get a good baseline, what I'm, what I'm glad that I believe Doug and Christina's team is doing now is they're, they're, they're pulling that data to show um, what, what we are at, where we are at now. So I'll give an example. APD, even though that we track it, we may not have the most accurate number on encampments in this particular area. Solid waste may though. So to be able to go to solid waste and pull their data on how many encampments are popping up um, in this particular area, right? And going to ACS and being able to pull their data and going to uh, security, city security and pulling their data. And then obviously on the APD side, you know, what crime is occurring within this particular area? So you get that overall picture of what's happening in this particular area. So if we can develop that baseline and correct me if I'm wrong, Kelly, I believe that's in the works now um, to when, um, or I'm sorry, not Kelly, Christina, <laughs> if that's in the works now, when everything does go operational, um, we really can accomplish that mission of being able to, to tell the community, this is the impact that the Gibson hub is having. Um, and it may just be quality of life issues. It may be, God forbid, it may be like, oh, there's a 50% increase in property crimes. Um, but then also it could be also highlighting the successes too. Maybe engagement goes up and the amount of community activities and functions in this particular area goes up as well. So um, I wanted to start off with that. Um, as far as APD's response, I'm gonna be a little selfish and just talk about APD, what we're doing right now. The way we look at it is, um, well, I shouldn't say the way we look at it, but uh, there was an idea about getting uh, looking at what downtown did with their public safety district. Downtown is fortunate enough to have a dedicated squad of officers to include a supervisor and a lieutenant that oversees that public safety district. Um, I think that's what we're striving for in the future when we have the, the resources and the staffing to do that, we can get to there um, and it would be great. It would be a separate, basically a separate chain of officers under my command that I can dedicate um, solely to the Gibson public safety district. Um, I'll tell you right now, I'll be the first one to tell you, I don't have the resources and staffing to do that. So understanding that I still have a, we still have a mission to provide a police response. Um, it's like, well, how can we accomplish that with what we have right now in our area command? So we do have a, a couple ideas that I'd like to share with you. Um, again, it's not finalized. Um, new ideas pop up every day. And this is where I would really love um, feedback and ideas from not only the council, but also the community members that are in, that are in attendance tonight. Um, but one of the ideas is really focusing on the, the, and the way our area command is split up is, is, is into beats, right? It's a beat is a, it's a particular amount of area. And let's say our area command has, has you know, 12 beats. Um, when our bid starts, our sergeants, you know, assign their officers to beats. And just because of, um, a staffing and the size of our squads, each team will have, uh, there will be vacant beats for each team. And in the past, we've always given the kind of the discretion to the sergeants to where it's like, here are your officers, you assign the beats. Um, because of this, and it's not a bad thing, but I kind of had to micromanage and tell them, beat 334, and this is where the Gibson hub is located, beat 336 and beat 323, those are their neighboring beats. These are the beats that, that are gonna be within the, um, the, the radius of the public safety district, um, what was ordered down to all of the teams within the area command is all of those teams will assign officers. And then we looked at who are enhanced crisis intervention trained officers, just understanding that, you know, this is a vulnerable population and, and this population of our community does, um, is known to have uh, mental health issues. And so, we want to start with our, our crisis intervention trained officers and these beats will be assigned first. We want officers um, for every team for all shifts um, assigned to where um, this, these are the, the, this is the area that they're going to be patrolling. Now it's only fair to say, and if anyone is familiar that's been on a ride along that's familiar with our operations, um, patrol officers, officers in uniform, one of our fundamental responsibilities is calls for service. When, when you as a citizen calls 911, um, you expect an officer to be there, right? So um, having officers 
on every single team assigned to this particular area that these beats are filled, um, they should be available for this area. But if it's one of those days where, you know, there's just, you know, a lot of calls holding and they're getting dispatched all over the area command, that can take away from the officers that are assigned to this area. Um, with our shift changes, with our new schedule, um, we will always have four officers um, in this area, granted that they're not being pulled because there's endless calls holding. Um, with the overlay, with swing shift and graves, we could have up to eight. So I'm confident to say that 24 hours a day, you know, 365, we will have a minimum of four up to eight um, that's assigned to this area that can respond because these are the officers from every single team in this area command. You know, but recognizing that they could be pulled away, um, in addition to this kind of staffing, staffing plan, we also looked at our POP projects. Our POP projects are referred to as a project-oriented policing or problem-oriented policing projects to where if there's an issue identified, um, you know, the lieutenants will, will look at that issue, they'll look at the underlying root causes and see what resources they do a, got, do, do a great job of putting a plan together and getting everyone on board and, and, and solving that problem. Um, not to say that this is a problem, but this definitely is an initiative to where um, we will have a full-time dedicated POP project um, for the Gibson Public Safety District. And that's the, uh, the, the, the POP project that Lieutenant Bartlett will be running. Um, for each of our POP projects, a full team of officers is assigned to, to, to do that POP for a month and we rotate them on a monthly basis. So each lieutenant has about two to three teams of officers assigned to them for that month to, uh, to conduct POP operations. So in a perfect world, Lieutenant Bartlett will have two or three teams, depending on the month, a, a minimum of two, um, to work the Gibson Public Safety District. Now again, pop, the POP projects are manned by the teams assigned to the area command. If, if there's a lot of calls holding, um, they have to take calls. And kind of what the POPs is we're really looking for proactive activity, not just being reactive, but being proactive. So it's in between calls or if there are no calls, and we do have those days, um, we want you to work the POPs and go hit these specific areas to achieve the objectives of the, of the POP projects. So between the way we staffed our beats and between this POP project, um, that is our, our, our plan going forward for now. Um, and we hope to kind of assess and see how effective we can be. Um, we're kicking it off now, even before anything goes operational. Again, just to help with getting that baseline of data to see how effective and to see what the hit is going to be with our response times for 911 calls. Um, Lieutenant Bartlett also um, had a great idea, you know, um, we always preach and, and I've said this at several neighborhood associations and, and I'm sure Mike, you've heard me say it at ECHO too. Um, really, the efficiency and effectiveness really um, is better when there's good information sharing and communication, right? You have a lot of businesses along that Gibson corridor. So he's going to start um, working with those businesses. He wants to, uh, he wants to, to form a business coalition with all those businesses in this radius, um, even outside the radius, if they want to get involved. But with any coalition, um, it's only as good as the members that contribute to it, right? I've seen some very, very successful ones. Um, Arapa being an example. I don't know if anyone's uh, familiar with Arapa, but I mean, you have big box stores basically posting surveillance videos of offenders and another store posts and identifies them and they basically have the entire case gift wrap for the detective um, because everyone contributes and they're actively contributing and communicating. So I, I've seen them be very, very successful if you have the participation. So I'm excited for uh, Lieutenant Bartlett's idea. I think it's great. Um, it, it will be a great platform to communicate and to share that, um, to share that information. Um, real quick, and I don't want to go too far on a tangent, Nob Hill. Um, Nob Hill is another example. Um, just this week, I was so fortunate that the, that the chiefs um, gave me two more bodies um, and I was able to, to bring on two new bike officers. So we have two bike officers for the Southeast Area Command. They're permanently assigned to Knob Hill. Now, like I said before, all of our uniform patrol officers 
they are tied to calls for service. They're tied to the radio. When the dispatcher tells them, I need you to go here, they have to go there. Uh, we're fortunate enough to have a PRT team. I know Susie is very familiar with them. A PRT team um, and the bike officers that are not tied to calls for service. Now our PRT team does a great job, you know, when, when it hits the fan and there's a lot of calls, they help out without even being asked. There's that understanding amongst the officers here. They do a great job doing that. But the good thing is, is that they're not tied to it. So they have, they spend the majority of their time being proactive. Um, in addition to that, they also, even though they're making the most arrests in the department and it's not a competition, they spend half their time doing good outreach with, uh, with, 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 with folks and stakeholders who care about the community and care about these vulnerable populations. So I think it's great. You got the, the most go-getters in, in, in solving crime but still doing that side of, of, of policing. So I think that's great. Sorry, that's a tangent. But with Knob Hill, these two dedicated bike officers, um, I mean, right to today, right now at Central and Girard, the, the, the call came in at the Starbucks. They're down there. Um, they, it got carried over to the subway and they're able to, to, to catch a, uh, an arrest someone for felony charges, right? Um, to, to two of the businesses that were affected down there. Um, and that's my main message there is just having them permanently assigned um, is going to make all the difference for Knob Hill. Um, I shared with you our, our two tentative plans going forward. Um, it'd be great to get at least two for now until we can do what downtown's doing with the permanent, you know, whole chain of officers. Um, maybe in the future, that's something else that we're, we're, we'll be able to do. If I can do that, you guys will be the first ones to know. Of, of, of course, if we can staff them with two permanent officers. Um, so from a public safety standpoint with APD being one spoke on that wheel, that's kind of our plan. What we've recognized right now is I think it, 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 it's, it's a fact to say, uh, regardless of people's feelings on, on, on Gateway, if they're a supporter or if they don't support it, um, there will be an increase in more people and more traffic. And that's what we're ready for. Do we know if it's gonna cause more crime? I don't think we know that at this point, we don't, right? Um, is it gonna be quality of life issues? Are there gonna be more encampments popping up? Um, the good thing is, and it's been touched on earlier in this meeting, we work uh, on a weekly basis with solid waste and with ACS and with code enforcement. Um, I call it the encampment task force. And we go around and, 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 and we work on these encampments. So um, I think it's important that those relationships and those partnerships continue. Um, and I think it's going to be all of these departments um, with their hand in it to make a successful public safety district. And with that, I'll, I'll, stand, for, uh, I'll stand for any questions. Um, I see that uh, it says Christina is uh, typing an answer to Raven's question. Um, I'll just read it to everybody. We hear that we'll be meeting people where they are at. If folks staying at the gateway are in program and have a setback, will they be allowed back into the sleeping lodging pod with other folks on program in their aggrieved state? In other words, are they going to you know, jeopardize others? Or will we have a dedicated separate space for relapsed folks to uh, safely stay so that on program people will not be subjected to those either drunk or on drugs or in crisis? So um, I believe Christina is, is working on an answer to that. And since uh, um, there's another question here, I'll just read it. Uh, and this is. Let's see, when did family and community services bring you, Commander Languit, into the discussion and development of the public safety district? You know what, and, and if it's okay, Mike, I'll, I'll answer that question, but I'd like to also give Lieutenant Barlett an opportunity to introduce himself and kind of explain, since he's gonna be the operational boss of APD's response for the Gibson Public Safety District, if we could carve out just a little bit of time to allow him to speak. Um, I don't know if um, if Christina is still on. Um, I'll, I'll be honest. I, I got a little bit nervous. I thought I was I was missing the meetings, but the good thing is I was told no, we haven't met yet. Um, I know I believe on a slide that she showed earlier, 
Um, it looks like summer of, of 2022 was the projected date to, to, to meet and to figure out um, what we are doing for the public safety district. So um, to answer that question, I feel like I haven't had any previous involvement. I've been brought to the table now. I'm excited to be at the table. Um, the only thing that I want the community know to know is I don't want them to think public safety district equals APD. You know, it, it, there's so many more people that need to be involved to have a successful public safety district. And with that, uh, Lieutenant Bartlett, do you want to just introduce yourself and give some thoughts? Sure. Can you hear me, Mike? My name is Lieutenant Gerard Bartlett, and I just want to say thank you for allowing me to be here with you tonight. I just moved to the Southeast from the Valley, so this is my first time meeting the Southeast CPC members. Um, I just kind of want to follow up with some of the stuff Commander Langwood was talking about, and I wanted to give some concrete examples of where we're at right now for at least this month of February. So for the rest of the month of February, right now we have four different teams spread out among our three watches to address some of the concerns in this pop area over by uh, the Gateway Center. Um, I did also want to talk about the Gibson Business Coalition and our crime prevention specialist is helping us get that started. And um, some of the questions that you put in the chat were about, you know, how are we tracking the stats and, and what do you think our baseline is going to be and about what the radius should be on the, uh, the public safety district. And so what stands out for me the most, you know, in the last few weeks since I've been here is picking up on some of the maybe the uneasiness, the inconsistencies, or the, the lack of forecasting that maybe some of the community members have felt. And um, um, hopefully my biggest role is to, is to listen to you and to listen to what your outcomes that you hope for your neighborhood to be. Um, and I just wrote myself a note right now when I was hearing you speak that regardless of the stats we keep, the most meaningful statistic to me and I'm sure Commander Languet is, is really your perception of safety in your neighborhood. Um, and I, another concrete example from today, I see Sandra and Raven on this call. You know, we, we met earlier today at the, uh, for part of their neighborhood association, and they let me know of an issue at the Weimar that I had no idea about coming into the area command. And, you know, we went out there today, we put a plan in place, and we'll be out there tomorrow with solid waste to hopefully address it. And, and while we were there on scene at the Weimar, we ran into another individual who's not a member of the Neighborhood Association, but who's been living in the community for 60 years. And it's that qualitative experience that I really want to capture, learn about, and use moving forward to see what we need to do as a police department to help you feel safe in your neighborhood. So I put my contact information in the chat there, my phone number and email address. Email is probably the best, but if you want to call me during my, my duty hours, uh, you could try after duty hours too, but definitely during my duty hours, uh, please do so. I would really appreciate it. Thanks, Luke. And I don't know if there's any further questions about like, like baselines. I hope that makes sense to everyone. My fear was like, if the radius is too far out, like if it goes all the way to I-40, and if there is crime or quality of life issues that's being captured, it's like, well, is that, is, is it an effect of the, of, the, of the hub? I would say probably not, you know what I mean? And it's like, okay, if we can have a baseline um, and then be able to compare back to it, um, whether if it's short or long, we'd have an idea of, well, this area showed that in the baseline that they've, this particular location have ha has, had a lot of crime. So when we do it after the gateway goes live, um, it's not a surprise or it's not, you know, giving an inaccurate picture that the gateway is the cause of crime and it's not, you know, if that makes sense. Um, before we go, too much further, uh, let's see. I see Christina's answering Melinda's question, uh, typing an answer. Um, and um, let's see, Arthur, basically uh, Arthur's question is, uh, which CPC services the Los Altos dog park? That's uh, on the north side of I-40. So that's in the Northeast Area Command, as I believe, uh, my understanding. Um, 
Southeast CPC is south of I-40. So um, Arthur, if, if you uh, need further uh, answers on that, uh, I will leave my contact info in, in chat before the end of the meeting. And uh, you can, well, let's see. Oh, <laughs> so Angel, are you answering that question? Arthur's? Yeah. Okay. Oh, Mike, um, uh, Susie asked a good question. Will we be, are we gonna be able to get the uh, last month's crime stats for Southeast area? Um, okay, well, Commander, do you have those? I'm sorry, Mike, I had to step away, say again? Uh, the crime stats, we, uh, yeah, good, thanks, Susie. Um, let's see, monthly crime report and use of force report. Um, and again, uh, at some point, I will try to, thank you, Susie, uh, I'll try to post those uh, in the, uh, the open uh, public folder. So right, that yes, you can sir, I can provide, it. I can definitely provide some, uh, some numbers. And again, these are, uh, these numbers are pulled from our, our, our CAD systems. Um, so that as far as final numbers that comes from our records division, um, these aren't going to be them, but they're, they're very, very, very close to it. Um, so for our total calls for service, and this is for the month of January, your officers that work Southeast responded to about 9,821 9, calls for service. Um, and then in that period of, of time also, we had about 12 uses of force. Um, and the breakdown for that is we had four level one uses of force that was investigated by the Southeast Area Command, Chain of Command. And then we had seven level twos and one level three. So those uses of force would be investigated by our internal affairs force division. Um, of, the, of those 9,000 calls, um, the breakdown between our, our violent crimes and property crimes, we had 96 aggravated batteries and assaults. We had five criminal sexual penetrations, one kidnapping, and then 36 different types of robberies. And there are two different categories that we um, like to analyze. It's our commercial robberies and our individual robberies as well. On the property crime side, we had 36 auto burglaries, 94 auto thefts, 18 commercial burglaries, and about 19 residential burglaries as well. Um, I will tell you for the month of February, and this was all for January, but for the month of February, um, our biggest crime categories is gonna be aggravated assaults and batteries, our robberies have increased, and uh, on the property crime section, auto thefts. Thankfully, all the burglaries are down and the, the larcenies are down, but auto thefts continues to be a problem. Um, our officers, your officers have worked very hard though. Um, they recognized where these auto thefts are occurring. Yeah. A lot of them are occurring in apartment complexes. So just within the first two weeks of this month, I believe in the first week we had about 23 or 24, um, and they were able to make about 11 felony auto theft arrests. And this last week, we're down to 17. So we're heading in the right direction. Um, on the violent crime side, aggravated batteries and assaults, again, is our, is our, is our biggest violent crime category in itself. Oh. Um, as you saw the numbers for last month, what I think it's important there is just to say, um, and I apologize if you guys hear my, my little one yelling in the background. <laughs> But um, your officers for the month of January, I want to say that they made 87 felony arrests and they cleared 84 felony warrants. Um, and like I said, it's not a competition, but they made more arrests and cleared more warrants than any other area command. Um, and they consistently do this. But even with all that great hard work, we still have a high number of aggravated assaults and batteries. And I mentioned this at ECHO and a few neighborhood associations that I went to. Um, that's why we're really focusing our resources into the restorative justice and conflict uh, mediation resolution that the city can provide as well. Um, I was happy to, I'm happy to report this last week. Um, there was a Knob Hill business um, and the neighborhood association that, that, that we were able to provide that um, training and information to. So 
my hopes for this year is by the end of this year that everyone in this area and all the residents and all the neighborhood associations, they understand that that is an additional resource um, to where if there is a conflict or an altercation happening, there's a resource to, 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 to come and try to resolve that before it escalates and turns into an aggravated battery assault or shooting or even worse, a homicide. Um, a lot of the uh, underlining kind of motivations for these aggravated batteries and assaults and homicides, Ooh. we can we can clearly show it was over a, uh, a dispute where it was just a disagreement between two parties and it escalated. That's why I'm hoping with the combination of the hard work that the officers are doing, their proactive activity, and with uh, working with community and really letting them know about this resource, um, we'll see a change in the in the aggravated battery and assault numbers. Um, is there any questions for the crime stats or the use of force for Southeast?